Hello, great minds. Welcome to another class on quantitative reasoning. Now, in this class, we are going to be looking at two exercises, exercise 11 and 12, with two examples each. First, exercise 11, example 1. The concept used in this exercise is addition and uh, subtraction that is plus and uh, minus first let's look at the picture we see a picture of an analog clock now this analog clock has numbers 1 to 12 all right when we move in a clockwise direction that is from right to left we call it plus but when we move in at a clockwise direction, that is left to right, we call it what? Minus. So we are going to be adding and subtracting. Let's look at the examples we have here. Now in the first example, we have a 9 plus 2. Ordinarily, we'll say that is 11, yes. But we'll need to know how to use our analog clock face to do this. So, we start with the first number which is 9 and move in a clockwise direction that is a plus. Okay, so when you look at the number, it's a plus 2. So, we count 2 from 9 to the front. Alright, and so we have 10 and 11. So, this is how we got 11. Alright, so the answer is 11 so let's look at another example the second one is 11 plus 4 11 plus 4 is supposed to give us 15 how did we get 3 now let's go to the face of the clock the first thing is to locate the number as usual because it's a plus we are going to move in a clockwise direction that's a plus okay so that is going to be to count 4 because it's a plus 4. So we count 4 from 11. So when we count plus 4, we will start with the number 12. We go to 1, we go to 2, and then we get to 3. So you see how we got the 3. So this is how we use the analog clock face to add. Now let's look at subtraction and we take the third example here which is 7 minus 6 that gives us 1 all right but let's see how we use the face of the clock to do this now as usual we're going to start with the first number as a starting point which is 7 because it's minus we move in the opposite direction that is anti-clockwise Remember, it's a minus, minus 6. Means we are going to count 6 from 7 in this direction. That is 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Alright, the answer is what? 1. So this is how the answer gives us 1. But this time around, we are going to try to subtract in the fourth and the last example here in these practical examples. And what is this question? 2 minus 3. Where 3 is bigger than 2, but how could that even give us 11 in the first place? Now we're going to find that using the face of the clock. Alright? Now let's deal with this game. Now you have uh, 2 being the first number. And since we are going to move 3 steps backwards, that is minus 3. So we count from 2, 3 step back, that is anti-clockwise. 1, 12, and 11. So this is how we got 11. Well, adding and subtracting using the analog face is so much fun, you know. Alright, so we are going to look at another example. Having looked at this, we know how to use the analog clock face to add and subtract now. So let's look at another example. 
Now in the second example of exercise 11, we are going to be making use of the concept of addition and subtraction. Just like we make use of addition and subtraction in the last example, we are also going to make use of addition and subtraction in this. Now let's look at the picture. This is a picture of the magic box. Alright, we call it magic box because there's something very special about this box. Numbers are arranged vertically and horizontally as you can see. We have the first one, 6, 0 and 9. We have 8, 5 and 2 and we have 1, 10 and 4. This is a vertical arrangement. Every number you see here is going to give you the same answer. This is why we call it the magic box. So you see, 10 plus 1 plus 4 gives us what? 15. That so adding each vertical line, we are going to get the same answer. Now for the next line, which is the middle line, so we try to add that, what are we going to get? Well, you simply say 8 plus 5 plus 2. That will give us 15. This is another 15. You see? Then when we take the last line that has 6, 0, and 9, are we going to get the same number? Let's find out. We are going to have 6 plus 0 plus 9. Alright? So we have 15. So all the three lines added up gives us 15, the same number. So this is why we call it magic bus. When we do it horizontally, we are also going to get the same number, 15. So they all give us 15. No matter how you add it, whether horizontally or vertically, you are getting a 15. So this is why it's easy for us to use it to find any missing number. So we call it the magic bus. Now look at this slanted form. If we add it in a slanted form, the magic thing about this is that you get the same number. Okay? 15, if you have checked. Alright? So how can you use this to get any missing number? Let's say, for example, we want to get the 5. If the 5 was missing, how are we going to make use of this to get the 5? So we look for a line that is complete. For example, the first line vertically is complete. So we can make use of it, the 8 and the 2, to be able to get our 5. Let's go to the board. First, the, we add the line that is complete. We already know it's going to give us a 15. So 10 plus 4 plus 1 is 15. So we have a 15. Now, we are going to subtract our 8 from the 15. So we have a 7. So 15 minus 8 is what? 7. Now, once we have done that, we recall that there's another number 2 on that same row. We we'll subtract it from the 7. What do you get? A 5. So this is how we got the 5. This is why we call it the magic box. All right, we have found out how to get any missing number, but let's just try one example. For example, if we wish to find the number four, the number four. So this number four, as you can see, is on the first vertical line. But this time, let's use the horizontal instead of the vertical. So we have 4, 5, and uh, 6. And on the other side, we, we have 1, 5, and 9. Now let's see how this is done on the board. So we start with the slanted side that is complete. The 1, the 5, and the 9. Again, this is going to give us 15. 1 plus 5 plus 9 is 15. All right? So we go back and we check. We discover on that same line, we have other numbers with the 4 on the slanted line. So we take those numbers and try to subtract them from 15. Is that understood? All right. So starting with the number on that same row, we have 5 plus 6. We have 11. All right. 
if we subtract this 11 from 15 we are going to get what a 4 you see this is how we got the 4 so 4 is the missing number there see that is the 4 so that is how we make use of this let's look at another example in exercise 12 we have example 1 and 2 but let's look at example 1 that will make use of ratio and fraction this is a mathematical concept that uses changing fraction to ratio look at 2 to 10 because the ratio is pronounced to all right 2 to 10 and 2 over 10 what do you notice the 2 goes to the top and the 10 that comes after is under so this is how we use it the same thing happens in the second example 2 to 7 is 2 over 7 okay and the last example what do you notice exactly you notice that 1 to 5 has become 1 over 5 it's quite simple as a size 12 example 1 so let's quickly go to the very last example in exercise 12 it makes use of four concepts which is addition all right it also makes use of subtraction square of numbers and also square root of numbers now let's go to the picture all right this is a letter k that was drawn and four numbers are attached to this letter now if we wish to find the biggest number here which is 34 we need to make use of 25 and 9 all right those two numbers in those positions must be used to get a 34 what can you do with 9 and a 25 to get 34 of course you add them up you add them 9 plus 25 that will give us 34 so that is how we got that 34 so anytime we want to find the number in that position we add up the number in the position of 25 and 9 so secondly if we wish to find 25 again we are going to make use of 9 and 34 but this time we are going to do the opposite of addition so we start with the largest number which is 34 we subtract 9 from it if you do that correctly you are going to get a 25 34 minus 9 is 25 all right on that same vein we want to find 9 so how do you get 9 we make use of the number 25 and 34 all right let's go to the board again this time we are going to subtract we start with the largest number which is 34 let's take away 25 all right what we get from that is 9 all right if it's done correctly okay now let's go back and try to find the last number on this picture that is 4 well to be able to get 4 we need to make use of 25 and 9 only but we must remember that 25 is a perfect square and so we must do the opposite of square which is square root all right so what is the square root of 25 is another word what is the number i must multiply by itself to get 25 of course the number is 5 because 5 times 5 is 25 so the square root of 25 is 5 once we are done with that we now try to subtract this result from the 9 so we have 9 minus 5 all right 9 minus 5 gives us 4 this is how we get the 4 you see it's quite easy and simple well this is all we're going to take on this video hope today's class was great i look forward to have you around in our next class attempt your quiz questions and 
do your assignments. Alright, bye. See you in the next class.